are not in Arkansas any longer. We are in New Mexico. And this is Erica's first time to ever go out west. And she had no idea that New Mexico had anything like this, like the trees and all that. And we are in Lincoln National Forest near White Sands, New Mexico. This is one of many spots we're going to visit here in New Mexico. This is also the place that I came to when I first came to New Mexico. And my mind was just blown. Oh, it was, gosh. And I'll actually put the link of that video when I first came to New Mexico, my first time ever out west. I'll put it in the uh, description below and link it right on top. And this is when, way before I created my YouTube channel, this is when Dome Life, um, kind of the beginnings of Dome Life too. So be sure to check that out. I'll link it below and on top. But this is Erica's first time and I have the honors of taking her out and showing New Mexico off to her. But here's our campsite. Tent there, all the trees, nice big fire ring. And then out here, it's just all forested. You can actually see white sands from here. So if you look right there, I'm not sure if y'all can see it, but it's just a white desert floor. And that's white sands. And then of course the truck, got the kitchen set up over there because it's shaded over there. But we're like one of the only people on this whole dirt road. There's a few right when you get on the dirt road. But besides that, like, I think we're the only ones. I don't know how much further down there are people, if there's any at all. But there's a whole kind of camp area over here. Some campsites. All, all over there. We checked those out. We decided to do this one. But all those are shaded right now. And the sun's not hot. It's, it's a different heat than uh, Arkansas. Arkansas was just getting to a point, it was, uh, it was pretty rough in Arkansas. Anywho, we're going to get breakfast started and I think we were cooking chorizo and egg burritos. So let's get those started. Breakfast was amazing. That chorizo was actually really good. I was impressed with it. But we have ate breakfast, cleaned up, all that. And we did go to the ranger station. I should have I should have brought the camera in and I didn't. I didn't think it was gonna be that impressive, but it was actually really, really cool. There is no fire restrictions and I'm shocked. So we can actually have a campfire tonight. That's exciting. Which even adds on to your first time here. It does, yeah. Because it took me three years to come out west until I could actually make a fire out here. So I, I'm impressed. Mm -hmm. We are now in the village of Cloudcroft and I'm gonna show you around. It's a pretty cute village. Yeah, it's cool. it's a little mountain town. Yeah. yeah it's cool. Let's do it.
it is hailing out here. Look at this. Hold on, look at that. It's so cold. It's like a little pea size. I can't believe it's hailing out here. Besides the hell and the rain, Cloudcroft is so cool. It's like such a just cute little mountain village. <laughs> Spooky. <laughs> We're such storm lovers. Oh yeah, I love a good love storm. A good storm. I geek out so hard about weather. Gosh, I love it. Cloudcroft is so cool and so cute. But now we're gonna go to Ruidozo and check that place out. See you there. made it to Ruidozo and it is such a cute mountain village. It's really, really cool. We are at the Cedar Creek Recreation Area and I brought my mountain bike all the way out here. I debated not riding because one, this would be my first ride from hurting my shoulder and two, I'm still pretty tired and my elbow is killing me. I have tendonitis in it and it has been hurting nonstop. It's not even my shoulder or my back or anywhere else that hurts, it's only my elbow. But I know I'm tired, but I know when I start mountain biking, it'll make the best of the day and I'll, be, I'll have so much more energy once I'm done. And I think Erica is going on a hike. Is that what you're doing? I am, yeah. Hi guys, we're going on a hike. Yeah, we're a little sleepy today just from traveling and the night prior, we only had, I don't know, two hours of sleep. Yeah. But we're just gonna do it. I always feel so much better after I'm take a walk in the forest so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. she meant she's mentioned something about how she feels better after doing a walk or something i was like Every you know time. i feel the same way about mountain biking so i'm gonna go on a mountain bike ride okay. yeah it's been raining on and off there's the storm cloud it's good though it's, yeah it's got it a is. good feeling outside oh always. yeah yeah the sun's coming back out it's warming up too so yeah feels good yeah we'll see you on the trail all right downhill all right here we go Okay, so from the get-go, there's some incline, not too crazy. There's this little bird that has been with me. I don't know if you can see it over there. But from the first of the trail, he's just staying on the ground. There he goes. It's pretty dry out here. Jonathan was not lying. Look how beautiful this is. Okay, so stumbled upon this guy and I have an app um, that identifies different plants. I'm like super intrigued by, you know, local native plants and their medicinal benefits if they have any and, and where they're native to. And this guy's called Adam's Needle and I just read, um, super neat. It's like a horticulture's dream to have this in landscape because it's such an eye catcher and man, is it ever. And it has medicinal uses as well, and is known to induce sleep. So it's a sedative, which is super cool. You can also use it as a soap, and you can eat it as well. So it's um, a wilderness survivalist uh, best friend, I guess. It's good to know. It's neat. Anyways, let's continue, see what else we can find. Look at that. This is mullein and it is found everywhere and it's super fuzzy and a lot of people mistake it for lamb's ear and mullein is incredible. It's very medicinal and this looks like a first year plant. They only live for two years so they're biennials and the first year it will grow in width and then the second year there's a little flowering um, Sorry, I'm not focusing, but there's a little flowering thing in the middle. 
and it'll get, I don't know, two feet tall. And it is fascinating, the medicinal benefits of mullen. Can't think right now, my mind's blanking, but mullen is incredible. And people steep it over teas to really try to extract, extract the essence out of it. So check that out, mullen is awesome. We're learning, guys. Oh, there's the first plant I showed you guys. I can't remember what it was called now. Adam's Needle, that's right. Okay, so I'm seeing this guy a lot on the trail. So I just decided to look it up and lo and behold, so it's called snakeweed, but it is used um, medicinally by, oh, what, what tribe was it? The Dakota tribe to make, uh, was used to as a sedative for horses. Sorry, my thoughts are so jumbled, I'm out of breath. But I think it's so cool. And it's also used the roots and the leaves. Um, you can use it as a diuretic or an anti-inflammatory. And it heals all kind of ailments like the cough. Just goes to show like how much is really around us that is so healing. And we have no idea. We have none. Okay, it might look all the same to you, but this is so beautiful and off in the distance. You can see a peak over there, it's awesome. Pines are so fun here. This guy looks like it has sap coming out of it. Yeah, look at that. Man. I've read that you can chew pine sap for different mouth complaints. It's so interesting. I don't know if you want to go around chewing pine sap, but if you have an ulcer in your mouth, <laughs> oh, this is neat. Neato! Man, I bet she was one something. Okay, anytime there's berries, you just gotta check those beauties out. So this is a fragrant sumac and it has medicinal uses and it's edible. And I read that a Native Americans used to use it and make a lemonade almost, except it was more tart. So that's neat. And the illnesses that it would treat would be like cold and toothaches and burns. Oh, I just love it. Their berries are so beautiful. I don't think you could just like pick a berry and eat it. I'm definitely not trying it. <laughs> I need to read a little bit more about it, but I just want to show you guys how pretty that is. Okay, getting a really clear picture now of that peak that was way off in the distance like 45 minutes ago and look how pretty that is. Look at that peak in the background there and there. This has been really, really special and despite the discoloration on my face, I'm really not that warm. It's such a dry heat and you hear people talk about that, but when you experience it for yourself, it's like a light bulb. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for coming along and just allowing me to identify different stuff. Half of you may hate it, half of you may be like, yeah, learning hour, which I'm always learning as well. So let's go see what Jonathan's up to and how his mountain bike trail went. He should be coming, he should be ending his ride on the same loop. So I kind of began it and he'll end it going this direction. <sighs> Anyways, have a great day guys.
I don't think I've ever been this close to elk this big. This is a, uh, this is something. Kind of scared to go past him right now. That mountain bike ride was so epic. Gosh, I had, I remembered that the trails here were fun, but I didn't realize they were that fun. And these are actually some of the only trails I've ever ridden out west are these. And I've heard that these are some of the best too. I think we're gonna shower and then we might come back here to cook dinner because we are a little ways from camp. We're about an hour away from our campsite. So we might cook dinner here or find somewhere else, we don't know yet. We just kind of go by by the wind. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're gonna shower and we'll see you after. Good morning, everyone. Morning, guys. <laughs> so yesterday was a little different. So we ended up not cooking or showering right after we had said we would. We had planned to go to White Sands National Park and from Ruidozo to there was a little over an hour and we were running out of time. So we went ahead and booked it to White Sands, had an amazing time, mm -hmm. saw a gorgeous sunset. And gosh, that was just, that was so yeah, beautiful. Yeah, no, that was really spectacular. That was, wow. And by the time we left there, it was pretty much dark. It was uh, nine o'clock when we left there, because that's when they closed the gates there. Yeah, park ranger was kind of shoving everyone out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, was, that was kind of funny to watch. Mm -hmm. But once we got back to camp, it was it's, it was pitch black. It was dark. We were tired. We were hungry. We picked up something super easy to eat. We didn't end up cooking, and we did end up getting showered. But anywho, it is a brand new day. Mm -hmm. We have a totally new plan today. We are actually leaving this location and we're going further up north in New Mexico. There's so much to see and we're trying to get as much in as possible in the short amount of time that we are here. But we will be packing up today and heading on out. But on the way there, we do have something to show y'all and it'll be very, very neat, I think. I've never seen it before, so. And we did not take y'all to White Sands National Park because I cannot film in White Sands. I cannot film in any national park or any National Park Service land. You have to obtain a permit and then a license or another permit through that specific park. And I wouldn't mind doing it if it wasn't, if it was not so expensive, but the lot, the permit itself is not that bad, but it's every individual park that adds up and they all have their own fines and fees for it. So that is why I cannot take y'all to White Sands and any other national parks that, we'll, that we will be visiting. But we have breakfast made. We're just having something simple and easy. Eggs and a muffin. It's good.
and it's quick and easy so we can get on the road. Final destination in this area of New Mexico. We are in the Valleys of Fire. This is a. That's <laughs> cool. <laughs> so I believe I read this is like 60 miles long. 40 miles. 40 miles. 40 miles. 40. I don't know where I got 60. This is one of the largest lava fields in the world, and it's here in New Mexico. And 1,500 years ago, which is so crazy to me, is when it flew. When it flew down. When it flew. Flowed. When it flowed, flown, flowed down the Tularoso <laughs> Basin. Yeah. Okay. So neat. 1,500 years ago. That's crazy. Yeah. That is wild. Yeah. And there's a large information plaque. I will go slowly over it. So if you want to read it, you can pause the video and read it. It's a lot to, mm -hmm. to take in. So this actually says 5,000 years ago, not 1,500, but online I read 1,500. Either way, that's crazy. So this lava that we're seeing did act actually did not come from a volcano, but from vents in the Talarisa Basin desert floor. And it says some of this area has a depth of 165 deep, mm -hmm. 165 feet deep, just of the volcanic lava rock. That's insane. Yeah, that is crazy. It even blows my mind even more that this did not come from a volcano, but from just vents in the desert floor. That's so wild. Yeah, those are pretty big. Those are huge. So large. All right, guys. It is hot. I took my shirt off because it's hot, and I got to work my tan lines. I'm uh, I'm white. I'm real white. There's a farmer stand there. Yeah. But this is our last stop in this first New Mexico video. Stay tuned because there will be a few more. But we will go ahead and end it here with y'all. And it has been such a great experience down here. And your first time down yeah, here in the Southwest. Really special.
So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, keep it wild.